Good morning, friends. Okay. Today we are going to start with a new chapter, which is on strategic analysis of operating income. I'll maybe first give a broad background of the chapter. If you look at the heading itself, you'll understand that here, what we are going to do is the profits which you calculate. You are going to do some extensive analysis on the profits. For example, at inter level, you would have learnt a tool called as ratio analysis. When you do ratio analysis from the financial statements, you try to make certain comparisons. Ah, uh, you try to analyze the performance of the company, whether the company is doing well or not doing well. Similarly, here, what I am going to do is I am going to look at the profitability statement of the company in different ways. One way of looking at the profitability statement is preparing product wise. Another way is preparing customer wise. Another way could be preparing segment wise. Another way it could be preparing geography wise. So there are multiple cuts which you will do. Multiple ways of looking at the financial statements are basically the profitability statement. Operating income is basically your profits. Operating income can be interpreted as EBIT. So basically, whatever profits I am making, I am going to do extensive analysis on the profits. to make certain meaningful conclusion out of it the conclusions can be that i may want to introduce a new product i may want to discontinue some product i may want to discontinue some customers i may want to expand with certain customers i may want to expand in certain geographies so here the focus is more on the analysis part as you do this we'll also be doing an area called as activity based costing under activity based costing you will also see an area called as activity based cost management so we will also touch upon an area called as cost reduction because abc is something which can help you even in the cost reduction side so the broad overview of the chapter is how can you look at the profits of a company in different ways one of the first tool which we are going to see is something called as growth price recovery and productivity analysis that's the first part of the chapter then we are going to focus on something called as activity based costing based on abc analysis you will prepare two types of statement one is called direct product profitability statement and second is called consumer profitability analysis or customer profitability analysis and then finally we'll see an area called as activity based budgeting so this is a broad overview of the chapter objective is very simple i want to look at the profit statement of the company in different ways the profit statement which a company prepares i want to look at slightly in a different manner <laughs> now just to give an example let's take pick loss and a company has product 1 product 2 product 3 in total this is just an imaginary example sales less variable cost less fixed cost of it so different products would have made different amount of money i'm some writing some random numbers 1 crore 2 crore and 50 lakh is the sales So this is a simple profit statement which I have prepared. Looking at the profit statement, you may end up making a conclusion saying that product two is a loss making product and product three is a highly profitable product. That's a conclusion you may arrive at by doing this analysis. You looked at the numbers. and looking at the numbers these were the numbers and you did some analysis and said that this is the profit statement of the company when you did this profit statement you split the fixed cost using some basis 
you have to split the fixed cost because most of the times fixed cost could not be related to the product it could be at a overall company level most of the times so you did some basis maybe you have taken some machine as or labor as or output produce some basis you took and prepared this statement and made a conclusion discontinue product to made a conclusion saying discontinue product to moment you discontinue product to moment you discontinue product to would the fixed cost come down would the fixed cost come down okay it's it's a common fixed cost nothing relevant to the product your fixed cost may not come down so if you go by this statement and make a conclusion out of it you will end up getting wrong conclusion you will end up making wrong conclusion so we are going to learn about activity based costing which will help us in better tracing of cost if you are not able to trace some cost to a product you will not subtract it here you will subtract it only at the overall cost level and call it as unanalyzed fixed cost or common fixed cost so this statement which is there is of not much use this statement will unnecessarily push me to make a wrong decision this statement will push us to make a wrong decision because the statement itself is incorrect the statement itself is incorrect what is a good profitability statement is one which is prepared on the principles of relevant costing i don't say that you don't consider the cost in your profit statement but if something is irrelevant then please put it at the overall level don't put it at a individual product level also using technique of activity based costing what activity based costing will do is it will try to convert lot of common fixed cost into product specific fixed cost it will try to convert because you may feel that certain cost are not relevant they are common fixed cost but maybe they are not exactly common fixed cost it may include a part it may include a part which could be traced again to the product line so the focus is preparing an income statement which gives you right conclusion now the right income statement could be that there is 1 lakh of fixed cost here there is 15 lakh of fixed cost here and there is 5 lakh of fixed cost here and after this 42 lakh is common fixed cost which i don't put it in any product 42 lakh is common fixed cost and my profit is 18 lakhs my profit is 18 lakh the same amount which you were which i had shown earlier but now all the three seems to be profitable all the three seem to be profitable it can even become that once you do proper analysis a profitable product could show losses a loss making product could show profits or which was a rank 1 product could become a rank 3 which was a rank 3 product could become rank 1 your priorities can undergo change so an income statement which helps an organization to make relevant decision to make right decision is basically a good income statement or a good profitability statement many a times your income statement would have an entry called as absorbed cost because of that you will end up making wrong decision clear any doubts on this so in this strategic profitability analysis well, let's first uh, let's quickly go through profitability analysis basically measures the performance of the firm against acceptable standards it can be as per the requirement of the management most important thing is it has to be as per the requirement of the management because it has to help us in taking appropriate decision it has to help us in taking appropriate decision decision making is the critical part if you use garbage data garbage in garbage out that's a simple policy so if you are using a wrong income statement obviously you are going to make wrong decision if you are using a wrong income statement the conclusion is going to be incorrect only so you will have to have a perfect income statement i am nowhere saying that you will have to ignore irrelevant cost in your profit statement but maybe there is a way of disclosing it there could be a slightly different way of disclosing it so that you end up taking the right decision you end up taking the right decision in simple words you have to follow the concept of relevant costing as well as well the concept of activity based costing when you apply them together you will end up making a right income statement that right income statement would assist you in taking a right decision 
in that the first area i'm going to look at is called st strategic profitability analysis under profitability analysis we have an area called a strategic profitability analysis then we have an area called as activity based costing in that we have two sub areas called dpp direct product profitability cpa customer profitability analysis and then finally i go to an area called as activity based budgeting now let's first look at the strategic profitability analysis now what spa is going to do is profit of 2021 which is 15 lakhs you can say profit of 2021 or you can even say budgeted profit is 2021 this is way of reconciling the profit now the profit can go up or come down because of three reasons according to sp analysis the profit can increase or decrease because of three reason one is growth can also say degrowth it can be growth or degrowth second is price recovery third is called productivity growth price recovery and productivity are the three components are the three components which can lead to a variation in profits for the company and you'll end up getting profit of 2022 in 2022 you could earn more than 15 lakhs you could earn less than 15 lakhs whatever variation is happening because of three reason one is either the company sells more or sells less if you sell more growth will have a favorable component if you sell less growth will have an adverse component so because of growth i'm making extra 1 lakh profit i'm making extra 1 lakh profit what is price recovery is changes in the input and output changes in the input and output your raw material prices can go up it will reduce profits if you are able to pass it on and increase the fg prices if you are able to pass it on and increase the fg prices then profits could be even having a favorable impact so price recovery is the net increase in sales due to changes in prices minus the net increase in cost again due to changes in prices so basically it measures the impact of inflation measures the impact of inflation or the realization change this is favorable 50000 this will have revenue as well as cost side that is your growth will have revenue increase due to growth cost increase due to growth and net increase similarly price recovery will have revenue increase or decrease due to increased or lower prices cost increase or decrease due to increased or lower prices and productivity is basically the utility of resources how have you utilized your resources properly in short it is the gap between standard quantity and actual quantity standard time and actual time for labor or standard time and actual time for variable overheads standard time and actual time for fixed overheads so it is basically the gap between standard utilization and the actual utilization this is another 150000 this will be only there for cost this will not be there for revenue item this item will not be there for revenue this item will only be there for cost and you will end up getting the profit so 15 lakh has become 18 lakh we say it has become 15 to 18 because of material price material usage labor rate labor efficiency that's one way of saying it the other way of saying is it is because of growth price recovery and productivity growth price recovery and productivity there could be three components which could contribute to this changes in the value for the company any doubts on this <laughs> the second segment of the chapter is on activity based costing activity based costing if you remember at inter level you would have learnt about this abc is one another way of analyzing the overheads of the company under the traditional system under the traditional system what an organization used to do is they used to club all overheads together and find out a single driver the driver could either be machinists or laborers these were the two predominantly used ones you can even go for other ones like your raw material quantity or output produced under activity based costing we classify the cost into various activities which are incurred which are done by an organization the critical activities of an 
organization and for every critical activity there was a computation called as cost driver rate you used to use the cost driver quantity you used to find a driver for every activity and for each of the activity we were calculating a cost driver rate anyway i'll do a problem to make you understand that so abc system helps in pacing over its to products or services with its emphasis on activities and their cost driver with the emphasis on activities and their cost drivers you try to understand for example the overall overhead is 20 lakh in that one part is inspection cost of 4 lakh the driver for inspection cost can be measurers can be laborers it can be inspectioners for inspection cost the drivers can be inspectioners company wants to use the understanding of abc and cut down cost that is called abm you learn it later activity based cost management so if 20 lakh is your cost you want to cut down the cost first understand what are the different costs inspection can be brought down if you either reduce the inspection time per unit or reduce the percentage of units inspected sometimes you were inspecting all units produced then you said all units does not make sense we will inspect only 50% unit sample testing or we will do 25% in a practical world when somebody tells you to do vouching you don't vouch all transactions you do a sample testing you pick a sample size and then start testing it because practically it may not be possible for you to if it's a bigger company doing vouching of all transactions so similarly inspection cost can be brought down if you either reduce the periodicity of inspection or reduce the inspection time the second cost could be setup cost so there are multiple cost classification setup cost can be brought down if you either reduce the number of setups how can number of production setup come down if you increase the quantity per production run if you increase the quantity per production run the number of production runs will automatically come down similarly the third cost can be dispatch cost the dispatch cost can come down either if you reduce the weight which is dispatched or if you increase the quantity in one dispatch so you will have to look at multiple ways and then cut down the cost so what abc will help you in doing is it will help you in finding out the driver earlier you were thinking that cost can be come down if you cut down labor hours but that's not the reality your cost are not driven by labor hours maybe one or two cost could be driven by labor hours major cost could have some other driver so your objective is to understand what is that driver what is that driver and then cut down that driver that is the objective cost is accurately measured and hence abc is helpful in providing more useful information to management benefits of abc is accurate cost computation what is the benefit of accurate cost computation is you get to know accurate profit accurate profit can help you in making the right decision we'll see problems where you will see that the decision which you take based on abc and the decision which you take based on traditional management will be different you will say that you want to expand product 2 and discontinue product 1 abc may end up saying that you have to expand product 1 and discontinue product 2 it may tell you an exact different conclusion as well so abc improves the accuracy of costing system when the accuracy of the costing system improves it leads to better decision making now this abc can be applied at a product level can also be applied at a customer level uh, <clears throat> we were doing uh, one chapter on your this uh, customer analysis there was this downstream supply chain management where there were some discussion on customer profitability we did some lifetime value of a customer analysis and there also there was another area called as <coughs> customer profitability analysis where you classify the customers into multiple category called as gold customers iron customers lead customers so all that classification can be done by using only activity based costing because activity based costing can help you in calculating the profit at a customer level at a product level at a geography level whatever classification you want so first classification is called direct product profitability dpp dpp is basically preparing the statement which i showed you in the beginning the statement which i showed you in the beginning is called a dpp statement but please do it on the basis of activity based costing don't end up doing it without activity based costing if you don't use the knowledge of activity based costing you will end up making a wrong decision so dpp is one of the methods to analyze the profitability of each product or segment of product dpp is mainly used in retail sector and so dpp is mainly used in retail sector there's a reason for that you'll understand that the overheads are classified slightly different here dpp can help in knowing the relative profitability of individual product once you know the profitability of the individual product like this statement it can help you in concentrate on 
profitable product and remove your loss making product so it can help you knowing which are making money so you expand on those products and which are losing money you cut down those product that analysis or that conclusion can happen through dpp statement benefits of dpp it is more from a retail sector point of view so whatever points you will see there could be some points related to retail sector better cost analysis this is not the benefit of dpp this is the benefit of activity based costing activity based costing can help you in doing accurate costing an outcome of accurate costing is better pricing decision an accurate of outcome or the outcome of better costing is better pricing decision better costing better pricing decision accurate profit statement can help you in rationalizing your product range what is rationalization is removing some products and adding some more products if you want so you can rationalize your product range you can remove the loss making ones and add the profit making ones and also it can help you in better management of stores and warehouse space that is nothing but rationalization of product range that is what is better management is you will remove the loss making ones and you will add the profit making ones and profit according to this is selling price minus purchase cost selling price minus purchase cost and minus indirect cost indirect cost is over it's i don't have labor cost and other things coming in here because this is more from a retail sector point of view basically the profit is equal to selling price minus variable cost minus indirect cost indirect cost or fixed cost these fixed cost you'll have to find out a driver once you find out a driver you will be in a position you will be in a position to find the relevant cost per unit you will be see all fixed cost are not irrelevant all fixed cost are not irrelevant unless you are not able to find out a proper driver and able to establish a relationship there is a problem else if you once you establish a relationship they can become a relevant cost so here the indirect cost can be overhead cost which are not directly linked to a product volume related cost batch related cost inventory financing cost all these different categories of cost all these cost in the traditional method were clubbed together an item called overheads the driver will mostly be number of units sold you divide by the number of units sold and say the cost per unit but in reality for example my overhead cost per student cannot be same for ca inter ca final and ca foundation because the amount of time which i spend on ca final could be different the amount of time which we spend with the student and ca inter and ca foundation can be different so logically saying the same overhead cost per student cannot make uh, sense because lot of cost we will not be able to trace but still you will have to find out a driver you will have to understand what is the cost which can be traced to a student and so that you are able to find some relationship and then do better costing customer profitability analysis is similar to your dpp dpp is done at a <coughs> product level customer profitability analysis is done at a segment of customer or even an individual customer you can say you have two segment wholesale retail or you can say you have customer a customer b customer c customer d you can prepare a profit statement at a customer level as well as at a product level same objective that helps you in finding out profitable product and loss making product this will help you in finding the profitable customer and loss making customer objective is to increase our focus on profitable customer and eliminate the loss making customer this concept i had talked about in supply chain management downstream supply chain management so i'll explain it here it is similar to dpp however profitable is computed for different customers segment groups segment or groups most probably this will be useful more for service sector because service sector does costing based on the customer segments it does not do costing based on a product range or based on a service also most of the times the costing under service sector the pricing is based on the ability of customers to pay so if the customer has the ability to pay you will see pricing to be on the higher side if the customer does not have the ability to pay you may even reduce the pricing so mostly used for service sector uh, same benefits you will see helps in identification of which customers are eroding profitability and which are contributing who are adding to my profits and who are leading to losses whoever is adding focus more on them whoever is leading to losses either eliminate them before eliminating before eliminating i will do a discussion with them i'll tell them that you are leading to losses for me reason reason is a customer places 
a low quantity per purchase order so you will see there are multiple costs which can be there the cost can be like purchasing purchase order cost dispatch cost inspection cost so multiple cost will be there these cost depends on my customer also some customer will order 5 units at a time if i supply 5 units i'll not be able to even recover the logistics cost so i'll be having losses so before telling no to the customer i will do a dialogue between the buyer and seller a constructive dialogue between the buyer and seller explain him that if you don't reduce quantity per order if you don't increase the quantity per order you keep calling me every time you there are a lot of sales returns from your side all this is eliminating my profits either you change this if you cannot change this then be ready to pay a higher price if you are not ready to do that then we'll have to say no to relationship because i cannot work with this because this is leading to loss this is a constructive dialogue between the seller and the buyer we'll maybe discuss on activity based cost management and your manufacturing cycle efficiency and other things because the question 16 will need an understanding on that now next part is activity based cost management now what is activity based cost management is if this is abm a part of this is abc a part of this is abc what is abm is a broader concept what abm is going to do is it is going to use the data which you get through activity based costing and try to do cost management what is cost management is cost reduction try to do cost reduction so ab is the abm is the application of the abc data when you do abc analysis when you sorry when you do activity based costing what you will end up getting to know is you will get to know that for the inspection cost the driver is inspection hours we are spending 2 hours per unit for rework we are reworking 10 percentage of the unit so some data you will keep getting use that information and do the cost management part do the cost management or the cost reduction abm basically utilizes cost information gathered through abc it focuses on managing activities focuses on managing activity what is activities testing is an activity rework is an activity ordering is an activity so my focus is how can i cut down the cost driver of an activity how can i cut down the cost driver of an activity it determines what drives the activity and how these activities can be improved to increase profitability objective is to manage costly activity costly activity with a goal of reducing cost as well as ensuring no impact on quality i'll not have any impact on quality a good cost reduction is one where cost come down without any impact on quality sometimes quality may end up improving also in order to do abm analysis we'll have three segments one is cost driver analysis cost driver analysis is the factor which causes a cost for example inspection cost inspection cost the cost driver can be inspection hours activity analysis is the various activity inspection is one of the activity and third is performance analysis so there are three segments to the area one is called cost driver analysis activity analysis and performance analysis coming to the cost driver analysis cost driver analysis will help you in knowing what is the base reason for a cost to take place what is the base reason for a cost to take place now they give one good example processing of customer invoice processing of customer invoice this depends on number of employee hours spent on processing that's the driver the cost driver is number of hours spent on processing this number of hours could be on the higher side number of hours could be on the higher side because there is no training to the employees there is no training to the employee inspection the driver is inspection hour but it is on the higher side because of bad product quality because you have a bad product quality you are required to do intense inspection if you are confident about your product quality you will not do that much inspection so every cost driver will have an underlying reason for that cost to happen one is the cost happening there is a reason for that cost driver also there can be an underlying reason that example is lack of training to employees bad product quality once you understand that base reason and 
tackle that base reason automatically number of employers will come down once number of employers come down automatically the cost will come down cost driver is basically the factor that causes activity to take place cost driver analysis will help us in improving the cost effectiveness and cost management through abm end objective remains same i want to cut down the cdq you can cut down the cdq only when you tackle the underlying reason activity analysis is basically classifying the activities into two category value added and non value added activity value added activities are those which makes even a small difference to the end customer which makes a small difference to the end customer anything which is valued by the end customer in whatever way it is a value added activity basically customer is ready to pay for those things anything which does not add any value to the end customer is a non value added activity and certain activities which you have to do by statute for example you will have to file your income tax returns for filing income tax returns obviously there would be an audit fees and other cost you will incur those will also go under the category of value added they'll go under the category of value added cost they will not become non value added because it does not make a difference to maybe the end customer but i am required to do them as per the statute activity analysis helps in identifying value added and non value added activity what is performance analysis is comparison of actual versus the standard or budget comparison of actual versus the standard or budget now what are you going to compare you have 50 activities in a company i'm not going to take all the 50 activity i'll first find what are the most critical activity or what are the most costly activity for a company for the costly activity at the beginning of the year you should have prepared a budget at the beginning of the year there should have been a budget at the end of the year you get actual if possible you can also calculate standard when we did standard costing with activity based costing we were calculating standard production orders standard inspection hours standard dispatches so that comparison you can do to understand are you wasting cdq or are you saving cdq cost driver quantity should focus on significant activity for compare performance analysis we should measure the performance of activity comparison of actual versus expected this will help us in knowing whether we are going in the right direction or not if no make certain improvement measure make certain improvement measure a sub part of this is standard costing with abc activity based costing we did an area called the standard costing with activity based costing that is basically part of this area that is what is going to help you in doing performance analysis now this value added and non value added i think there is again little bit of more extra explanation but broad thing remains the same which are unavoidable customers are willing to pay for this non value added are those which are not valued by internal or external customer this is a waste and should be avoided customers are not willing to pay for these cost okay next thing is this activities which are there i think in the theory part in the ppt i have not covered it the activities which are there they have four way classification the activities the activity classification is unit level batch level product level facility level these are the four way classification you can write types of activity i'm not sure which chapter i have covered this so may not be there there is a problem on this but the theory part i'm not sure whether i've covered it in this chapter or not okay it is there it is there okay no need to write then unit level batch level facility level and product level there are four types of activity certain activities will be incurred at a per unit level certain activity cost would be incurred at a per unit level example direct material cost direct labor cost inspection cost if you inspect every unit inspection cost if you inspect every unit so unit level activities are those which are incurred at a per unit level activities performed each time a product is manufactured example direct material direct labor even inspection can become if you inspect every unit you produce batch related cost are those where you inspect one unit out of 100 units or the cost is incurred for per batch of production so inspection could be one uh, material ordering could be one where you order 1000 units at a time you don't order one one unit so activities which are done for a batch of production example material ordering and setup cost 
third is product level activities these are the activities which are incurred specifically for one product but not incurred for the other which are incurred for one product but not incurred for the other product example advertising if you take advertising as an example if you do advertising for specific product for a specific product that becomes a product level activity if you do advertising for the whole company so pepsico has multiple sub products if they do advertising only for lays it becomes a product level activity if they do advertising of the company and then it becomes a facility level activity these cost will not be there at a per unit level or at a per batch level so cost which are at a per unit per batch you put it there but certain cost like rent rent is not per unit rent is not per batch if you pay rent only for a specific product then rent is a product level activity based cost if you pay rent for the entire company then rent is a facility level product cost sorry facility level cost Okay. manufacturing cycle efficiency i have touched upon this at multiple places now again we are going to see this area called as manufacturing cycle efficiency manufacturing cycle efficiency basically is going to measure how much percentage of time goes into value added activity for a company there is only one value added activity which is called processing time there is only one value added activity which is called processing time so process time is time taken to convert input into output apart from process time you will have inspection movement transportation queue time waiting time all these are non value added inspection waiting storage all this will become non value added summation of this is called manufacturing cycle time summation of this is called manufacturing cycle time there is another concept called delivery cycle time delivery cycle time can be more than manufacturing cycle time on august 23 i give a order on august 23 i give a order the order is given to the company company did not do anything for the first 5 days they were interacting with me they were asking what do you want exactly they were understanding my requirements properly so for 5 days things went on that then after that they started manufacturing so process time started then inspection happened some waiting time was there some storage time was there so all those they incurred that went on for another 20 days so manufacturing happened so manufacturing cycle time is 20 days delivery cycle time will be 25 days delivery cycle time would be 25 days delivery cycle time is the gap between the receipt of order and delivery of goods manufacturing cycle is production time you can just remove this word required production time per unit it is basically the production time per unit or per batch of units it could be for a batch also we normally will end up calculating per unit later manufacturing cycle efficiency is processing time which is a value added time everything else is non value added processing sorry inspection waiting movement storage processing obviously will come in the denominator also this denominator total is technically manufacturing cycle time the denominator total is manufacturing cycle time velocity is how many units you have produced velocity is basically the last something called as manufacturing velocity which is basically how many units you have produced in a given time i think we had done one question on this area on manufacturing cycle efficiency in uh, i think uh, when we were doing an area called as uh, cellular manufacturing there were two questions on this we have already done there there you would see a difference between delivery cycle time and manufacturing cycle time there was a question where they said that you received the order and you did not start manufacturing for some 2 3 days so that is one area which you can see now when i talked about something called as act activity based cost management i started something on that i said abm is a broader concept and abc is a subset of the abm what abm tries to do is it tries to get an understanding of different activities an organization is likely to have and what is the cost driver con uh, how much is the uh, what is the driver for that which of them are value added which are of them of non value added so abc your abm analysis included a cost driver analysis that is understanding the 
base factor as to why a cost is taking place. We also had something called as an activity analysis, which included value added activities and non value added activities. And there was an element called as performance analysis, where you analyze the cost or analyze the performance of the costly or the most important activities of an organization. Now, where can be ABM be applied by an organization? Now, the goal of ABM is basically to satisfy customer needs with limited resources limited resources is limited activities your whatever activities you are consuming that is based on certain resources which you need to use the resources can be defined in terms of men material machine money now the problem is the customer needs have gone up significantly in the recent scenario what used to be the need of the customer 20 years back doesn't seem to be the need of them they want the best quality product they want it as the lowest possible price they also want extra customer service they also want you to provide free delivery so there are a lot of expectations from the customer side which have increased we learned in an area called as your modern business environment the change which is happening earlier it used to be a seller's market suddenly it has now turned <clears throat> a turn to be a buyer's market except in few sectors where sellers still influence the term but it's predominantly a buyer's market because of this what has happened now is your buyer's needs have gone up significantly and it's very critical that i take care of both the aspect the quality angle as well as the cost angle you cannot keep saying that i provide the best quality product so i am ready to charge a very high price that will not work so you will have to balance both the aspect the quality as well as the price along with that maybe you will have to innovate in your product you will have to come out with new features you will have to provide free delivery you will have to provide after sale support you will have to provide some uh, there should be a good relationship with the customer so all that is critical lower cost higher quality faster response time greater innovation so customer is expecting almost everything possible from a business and there are businesses which are trying to meet this so in that abm can also play a role what are the roles of abm is abm can help you in cost reduction abm can help you in doing some benchmarking abm can also help in doing something called as business process reengineering ABM can also help in something called as activity based budgeting or activity flexible budgeting. We'll talk about this term as we proceed. So these are the areas where ABM can play a part. Cost reduction, ABB, activity based budgeting, BPR, benchmarking and performance measurement. These are the areas where ABM can play a part for the business. Now, what is the role in cost reduction? Cost reduction is a very simple role they play. Cost reduction is they understand various activities which would be needed they also analyze the driver for the activity so when you analyze the driver for the activity you understand the core reason as to why a cost is taking place once you know the core reason of a cost taking place it is possible for you to cut down that cdq cut down the cdq obviously the cost will come down second it can also do something called as analysis of activities into value added and non value added you eliminate all non value added activity you go ahead and eliminate the non value added activity it can also help an organization in doing performance analysis that is doing and performance analysis of the most costly activity or the most important activity where we compare the actual cdq with the budgeted cdq in this way it will help us in doing cost reduction identifying and quantifying the process waste and help in continuous improvement what is the process waste is waste in terms of the cdq the cost driver quantity how much quantity are we wasting so waste in terms of cdq can be quantified and based on that an organization can take corrective action second it will also help in part activity based budgeting now what is activity based budgeting is uh, you would have learnt about an area called as fixed budgets and flexible budgeting at inter level. When you do your flexible budgeting, what used to happen is 10,000 units, there's a budget. 15,000 units, there's a budget. 20,000 units, there's a budget. 25,000 units, there's a budget. And most of the expenses were driven by the volume. Volume increases, cost will increase. Volume does not increase, cost will not increase. And there was a classification of variable fixer. That approach is very simple. That's a simplistic kind of an approach. But now what we need to do is, you will have to estimate the act activity which would be needed activity means the cdq which would be needed for 10000 units you will need 10 production run for 12000 units you need 11 production run 
for 15000 units you may need 12 production run it may not be exactly moving at the same rate some items may move at the same rate also you will have to decide the cdq for different levels of volume which an organization is likely to do this way i can also do my resource planning in a better manner because what will happen is if i have 10000 15000 20 25000 30000 these numbers are available i'll get to know that inspection for inspection i need 20000 hours 40000 hours 60000 hours 80000 hours 1 lakh hours once you identify this you will know that you need two people in the team four people in the team six people in the team eight people in the team so you'll be able to identify how many men would be needed how many material would be needed how many machines would be needed and how much money would be needed that planning can happen so activity based budgeting is basically estimating the cdq estimating the cdq for different activities are the most important activity so that can be done with this framework for identifying amount of resources needed for budgeted activity level amount of resources needed for budgeted activity level actual results can be compared with budget to identify areas with major discrepancy and this can help in continuous improvement whatever this actual comparison with budget whatever they are talking about that's technically performance measurement which is the last part of the business application of abm or performance analysis what is performance analysis a performance comparison the performance management system would have touched upon this saying that you need to have targets for everything and there should be a comparison of actual versus the target so that is what this is all about bpr bpr is basically something called as business process reengineering what it says is a process consist of set of linked activities there is going to be linkage among the various activities which an organization does because of this linkage what can happen is abm one can help you in <coughs> bpr by measuring the performance see the first part of bpr is i want to know what is the existing performance of an organization so it is a set of activities done by an organization bpr is basically a process by which i do a fundamental rethinking and i do a radical redesign which will lead to significant improvements if you remember it was cost quality delivery speed so first thing is i need to know what is the cost what is the performance on the delivery side what is the performance on the quality side what is the performance on the speed side first you know what is the existing performance then you can think about improvements and other thing so cost quality delivery speed so measuring performance determining cost and once you determine this you will be able to identify areas for making certain improvements benchmarking is comparison so you can compare the cost of one segment of a business with another segment you can try to compare the performance of one year with another year or one month with another month based on the various at every activity level you can do this at every critical activity which an organization does last part is something we have already discussed focus on measuring the efficiency and effectiveness of activity how you do this efficiency and effectiveness of activities by comparing the actual performance with the budgeted or the standard performance for certain activities you will have to take the budgeted performance for certain activities you may have to take the standard performance you do this comparison related to cost time quality innovation technically whatever the things which you see in your bpr where significant improvements in cost quality delivery and speed delivery and speed is basically time related aspect they are also adding an element called as innovation so these are the five business application of abm because in an exam scenario what type of question will come we cannot be <coughs> we cannot tell that with certainty now how can an organization implement abm implementation abm for implementing abm two three things you will have to do one you will have to implement activity based costing activity based costing implementation is a critical aspect because abc will help you in getting the cost of a product and it gives lot of information that information needs to be analyzed through the process of abm that information needs to be analyzed through the process of abm and based on that you can make certain improvements in the organization also when you are implementing abm i need the senior management support without the senior management support it is difficult to implement the abm so i think the first step is talking about what challenges the company is facing today identify important issues or challenges the company is facing and what can be done to address this issues you need the top management support for identifying the critical needs implement the abc system abc is activity based costing method implement this then once this is done 
finally you will be able to implement abm implement activity based costing management your abc has to be implemented first abc will give all those possible information which i need and based on that abm can get implemented by the organization abm is a broader concept abc is a subset of abm okay benefits of abm i think we have already discussed them one is on the cost reduction it can happen it can also lead to quality improvement because uh, you will be eliminating some of the waste activity some of the rejections rework all those things can get eliminated by the organization so it can help you in improve the efficiency and effectiveness of each of the processes that finally leads to cost reduction quality improvement performance on the delivery side can improve performance on the innovation side can improve you are you will also be able to do something called as resource planning what is resource planning is understanding how many team how many members you need in the uh, <coughs> inspection team 2 4 8 6 all that can be done focus on cost reduction implementing activity based budgeting clear understanding of business process and cost okay effectiveness for management decision making identify key processes waste elements permanent management prioritization and leverage of key resources and finally i talked about something called as abc versus abm again abm is a broader concept abc is a subset of abm abc basically focuses on finding accurate cost of a product abm is a broader concept and focuses on using the abc data for better management of activity leading to continuous improvement at an abm level also we have two types of abm one is called operative abm and second is called strategic abm operative abm and strategy this suddenly got tested in one of the exam question it was not there in the initial theory itself but it was part of one of the case study the case study was there in your study material so there is something called as two types of abm operative abm and strategic abm what is operative abm is taking all operational decision with respect to the abm knowledge so whatever information you get through abm taking all operational data analyzing the various cdq analyzing the various activities which an organization perform strategic is taking the decision with the help of this what kind of decision you can take you will decide to discontinue some product you will decide to introduce some product you will decide to expand that is called the strategic abm okay already talked about activity based budgeting planning and controlling the expected activity expect activity to derive a cost effective budget that meets the required goal you will have to do planning at every activity level the planning needs to be done at every activity level type of work or activity to be performed that is uh, when you used to do your abc in abc steps there was a step called as computation of cost driver quantity in the computation of cost driver quantity we used to start with particulars activity total cost cost driver name cost driver quantity cost driver this is what all is about type of worker activity to perform quantity of worker activity quantity is cdq cost of work is total cost cost of work is total cost so whatever you used to write there activity total cost cost driver quantity name rate so quantity is cdq cost is total cost type of work is activity or you can even say cost driver name so all things are there as part of this ABB works well with activity based costing system it improves the accuracy of the forecast it can also help in cost reduction <coughs> an extension of this is activity flexible budgeting what is activity flexible budgeting is flexible budget which you used to prepare at inter level the only difference is under flexible budget under flexible budget our cost <coughs> sorry our projections were varying only on basis of one parameter which is the output 10000 units 15000 units 20000 units 25000 units 30000 based on the output you used to prepare a budget here under activity flexible budgeting you will not have a single cost driver you will have multiple cost driver that's the only difference <coughs> prediction of required activity level as output changes this will help in doing variance analysis it is different from traditional flexible budget under the flexible budget you had a single cost driven here you will have different activities and each will have a separate cost driver there are going to be multiple cost driver for each of the activities of an organization so you will use different cost driver with based on the different cost driver you will be able to you will be able to predict what is the likely cost an organization is going to have now abc's role in decision making decision making is one it can help you in doing manpower planning how it does help in manpower planning is i have told you different activities so based on the different activities you will be able to understand how many employees would be needed so one is resource planning can be done or manpower planning can be done it can also help you knowing when to expand 
when not to expand so when to expand which products to expand which products to shut down so it can help you in rationalizing your product range it can help you in taking a decision on certain expansions to be done <coughs> facility and resource expansion abc can help in knowing the need for expansion based on activity demand it can help in tracking whether the specified cost benefits are achieved as expected post expansion so one is on facility and resource expansion that's an area where this will play a part second helps in decision uh, decision relating to okay it should be decision relating to addition or deletion of product range decision relating to addition slash deletion of product range so that's a second step where it can help uh, one of the step which they say but i don't believe this to be a critical one which is cost plus markup method this is not predominantly used in the practical world as of now most of the pricing decision happens on the basis of the market price we rarely follow a cost plus markup method in case if you follow a cost plus markup method this method would be more accurate this method would be more accurate because you get accurate cost uh, <clears throat> i'll just talk about these two points complement to tqm what is complement to tqm is when you implement a total quality management there are certain improvements which you expect on the quality side and ultimately on the cost side quality will improve but ultimately the overall cost of the organization will also come down now this abc will provide data what data it can provide it can provide data on percentage of rejection it can provide data on the cost of quality it can provide data on percentage of rework it can provide data on amount incurred on inspection per time spent on inspection so it can give you the quantitative data as well as the information which is not there in the financial statement you will not have the information in the financial statement on the percentage of rejection percentage of rework all this data will have to be captured as part of your abc so provides data that can help in tracking the financial impact of improvements implemented not only the financial you can even analyze the non financial aspect decision support for human resource again <coughs> let me this this can help in deciding on hr expansion or outsourcing you can ultimately decide whether you need more employees or do you need to do some outsourcing of activity all that angle can come in through activity uh, based costing 